Introducing NA10's AI Workflow Builder. What is it? You just write in natural language the workflow that you want and NA10 will build it for you using AI. Now, it's currently in beta mode, but we're going to try it out. We're going to see is it actually worth using or not. So, on NA10, which if you don't know is an AI automation workflow platform, I'm sure you know about it if you're watching this video, but basically we've built a bunch of workflows just like this, right, on the channel here. Now you can create like AI agents which reply to emails, you can do a bunch of stuff like, for example here, it's IT operations, security operations, DevOps, sales, um, and then me. You can watch this video to hear our pitch. No, oh, thank you. Anyway, they just got a big investment and that's kind of why this is coming out, if you're wondering, by the way, because if we check here, da 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 180 million in recent funding. So let's go check it out. We're going to go and to use the AI workflow builder, it's on the side of your AI workflow um, canvas. So here we have it on the right hand side. And you've had this for a little while now where we can go in and actually chat away. So let me open it up. We can actually go and um, ask if something's gone wrong, what's happening here, blah, blah, blah. But now we can actually go in and apparently build with the AI. So let's give it a try. So my first thought of what we can do here is let me click build with the AI. There we go. NA10 AI beta mode. So what we'd like to automate. Let's do YouTube video chapters. So I want to build an NA10 workflow automatically creates blah, blah, blah. So this is one of their example ones. So I would think if I was building a product in beta mode, I would already have this workflow made in the background so that it would just pull it through automatically. So let me send that in and we'll see if we can watch it actually working. Um, and this is kind of where we'll see, is it a demo mode or is it like the real deal? Although, I don't know, we'll see. After it does this, we'll come up with our own little workflow and we'll see if it can do that. But whilst this is thinking and working away, something I wanted to say about it is that when you come over to any 10, you have like examples, just like this one here. And the way you get to these is product templates. And inside templates, as you can see, they have over 6,000 from their community. Now, they'll have a bunch here, but you can find them by just searching or selecting different like categories. So if you go to, for example, just AI, see what people have made here, chat with local LLMs, analyze a landing page, chat with a database, that's a pretty cool one. We've done stuff like that on the channel before. So from here, you can just go in and find what you want, and then you can just download the template and hook it up, boom, sorted. And I found the more of these that I've made, whoops, the more that actually hooking them up is the frustrating hard bit. The templates are pretty easy to come across, as you can see with like 6,000 here. So let's see, I think it might have worked here, searching nodes, getting the nodes, and it tells me how to set it up. Now, this is cool. I think, honestly, here, this, see, this is the kind of thing my brain just jumped to. Hey, you could sell that. Because <laughs> this is the kind of thing that people do. You have this, whap that in there, the setup. Then, boom, you've made your template. So let me zoom in, and we'll see what it looks like. So what does it do? Manual trigger. Then the workflow configuration, what's this here? So getting the video ID, it will then go and get that video, details, use the details I imagine, to then get the captions, from that captions, generate chapters with AI, analyze the following, oops, and then format the chapters and update the video description. So let me see if I am even logged in. Oh, I'm not logged in. Ah. To sort this out, it's a nightmare. But you can, can go to the open docs and then follow these steps and get the relevant um, information. All right, we're back with this old video. I've just gotten the ID. I've done all my logging in, malarkey. We're ready to go. Let's execute. Oh, come on. All right, let's try again. Add parameters, undefined JSON dot video ID. Oh, so it's right. So here it looks to have gotten this wrong. 
should be ID, not video ID. It looks here. Let's try again. Oh, error here. Resource you're requesting could not be found. Jason.txt. So, what, what is it actually trying to get? Uh, I don't think it actually gets to video captions. I think that's the problem. Let's try again. Wait, you already have a cancel. Um, execute and refine. We'll run it from here. See what it says. So I think it's trying to get the transcript from the official um, YouTube one. But the official YouTube one doesn't give the transcript. That's why people use these different API services. So as you can see, it's trying to build this out to sort it here. Whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Ah, I just want to move the screen. There we go. It's doing that Mac mouse thing where it tries to slide. Right, so it says it's ready now. Let's see. Oh, wait, get video captions actually what? Let me see. What's it trying to get? Hey, it says it's done. Generate chapters for AI. Transcript snippet description analyze the following transcript empty. Yeah, I thought that I, do, do, I know for a fact it doesn't work. And the reason I know for a fact that that wouldn't work is because let me see if this first or is there any use really because it doesn't work. Let's just save it. But I have a YouTube description generator workflow. Is it on here or is it on another one? What's on a different one? Um yeah, I have created this exact same workflow and I know that you can't use YouTube for it. So there's one example of trying to do it. Let's try another quick example to see if this is any good. Let's try and get it to just create one that actually works. So chat. I don't like how you only get 50 credits and it's not 50 bills, builds. It's uh, 50 messages. So last one when I got two credits used up because it got it wrong. Which I hate when it does that. So we'll chat with my emails. Most it's working there. How would you get more credits for this? You move up my plan. So let me see. Fifty AI workflow builder credits. This one's one fifty a month, which is still not a lot, man, at all. Like the fact that there's no like unlimited or something. Not a fan. I wish I could just plug my own API endpoint in. Uh, API. API key. So this one should be easy because it should just be able to go in and read from my Gmail. But we'll see. I don't know what it's trying to do here. Right, so yes, get all messages right. So let's uh let's give it a try. Execute and refine. So just say hi. Cool, nothing here. That's cool. They'll say latest Mail, question mark. Let's see what my latest mail is. Do, 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 do. Verify. Yeah, automation one, two, three. Hmm. Dallas, USA. This doesn't sound legit. No, it's an unusual. And when was this date? It doesn't seem... Oh no, I mean it must be, yeah. Apply the AI waitlist.com. There you go. So it is legit. So it does appear to be working. Which is cool, right? So we have this little workflow. Let's see if we can build on it so that it can also reply. So also have it be able to reply. Oh, that's the wrong, wrong one. Let me co copy that. Um, put it in here. To or actually have it to be yeah, able to reply. We'll see if it can then make it slightly better. Now the thing here is again is that it's going to create slightly more complex workflows. But I do have a feeling that as we get increasingly complex, it's going to have no idea what to do.
Because if I then update this to say, right, I want it to actually, instead of this, I want it to automatically, so let's do that. So automatically draft emails. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's honestly probably that. And then here, to give it more context, we want to update it to have rag. So update to have rag. But then the thing here is, unless we fully test this out functionality-wise, we're just going to see, is it good at drawing like little Jasons, essentially, you know. But people have been saying for ages that, that I mean, that doesn't even do it automatically. Automatically on a new email received. And don't worry, we'll go and test this out in a minute. But um, yeah, people have tried to do this with Claude specifically and a few others, but honestly, I've never found it to be that good using like AIs to try to build these out, even with context of the documentations. So let's see here. So it's still got a chat trigger. I want it to remove that chat trigger. There you go, new email trigger. What is it doing? Why is there so many agents? If this works, I'll be pretty impressed, to be fair. Right, so let's um, execute the new email trigger. And then... Oh, hi. What's happened here? So, it appears to have drafted a reply. Um, to here. So, I mean, let's go check it out. Oh, giving them my biometric data. I'm on about this all the time for my own government. But yeah, I'll give it to Google. The American government. Anyway, let's uh, skip this bit. La -de -da -de -da. Go to drafts. And boom. There we go. It's actually... Um, Done a draft. I mean, I'm actually pretty impressed with that. Update to give permissions to add maybe things to calendar to and update calendar invites. So now we're making it like a full personal assistant. Now again, this is still a simple workflow, but the fact that it's even just holding this logic so far, I'm actually pretty impressed. Um, but I guess it depends it becomes when it's like stuff it's not aware of like the YouTube transcript one so I think it will probably be then the context that it requires out with just any technology like when it actually needs to have some knowledge of the real world maybe where it kind of falls short anyway let me see this here so credential new credential let's sign in Let's just give it this one. Tis me, tis I here. I will send my fingerprint to Google, it's probably to Apple. Anyway, select continue. There we go. Get connected. Select the calendar, my calendar. There we go. Let's execute and refine this. So give her a new email, draft it up, blah, blah, blah. Cool. So let me send it an email and we'll see how, how that goes. Right, so I have this here. Need to see you tomorrow, 8 a.m. sharp. Book it in. Send that. And then we will see how this workflow goes this time. So let's execute here. Apparently there is uh, no information. Oh, right, there we go. So, need to see you tomorrow, 8 a.m. sharp. Draft to error invalid email address so the two is undefined why would the two be undefined I don't know shall I let it try to figure itself out although it's going to use up my monthly credits but we'll see so it's going to see an issue no it says it's operating smoothly I don't know why it would not know that it's from me. Let's check this again. It is from me to from me to you. From me to you. If you know that that is, comment in the this, comment in the description. Comment in the comments below. Let's try one more thing. Oh, 
invalid email address. So I don't understand this here. So what's it then? So it's from here to me. And then it comes in to there. Subject, blah, blah, blah. But then here it's unable to read the to that the AI agent gives it. So it's possible an AI agent problem. Let's ask any to any AI, see what it says. But I think here maybe this is where, you know, the limitations are something to fall through. Now it's pretty cool that they have this here on cloud. I think it is a step in the right direction for what they're trying to achieve. But people have been complaining that it's not in the self-hosted version. But I think it's because here, as people are saying in the comments, they're trying to basically appeal to their new $180 million investment. Right, they need to show them that they're moving in this right direction because on like Zapier and stuff you can do this kind of thing. I'm sure it's Zapier. Um, in any ten, they ha there has been like any ten chat that's popped up, but never actually have an any ten one. So it's cool for them to to introduce it. But again, it's just like vibe coding. It makes me think of like what is the end game? If you can have an AI which builds whatever you want, what is the actual end game here? Which actually. Side note, I have a video coming on that soon. Try to work out what the end game actually is here for um, these vibe coding things. And long and short is either it has this brilliant utopianistic uh, app pool, workflow pool, where you have everything you've ever wanted in it, or it becomes this um, saturated, low quality pool, which everyone wants to avoid. And then they're just going to start trusting brands even more, which is probably the more likely solution. And places like Anytem will just become the front for, you know, their official templates. And Lovable will become the front for Lovable's official sites. Stuff like that. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.